Hey, I'm Ryan, and welcome to The House. We are so glad that you've chosen to join us from all around the world. And we hope more than anything that you might find hope and life in learning about the person of Jesus. If you're looking for additional information about The House or just for more resources, you can find them online at thehouseonline.ca. Thanks for joining us today, and enjoy the service. Well, hey, good evening. Welcome to the house. It is great to have you joining us this great Remembrance Day day. Why don't you stand with us? My name is Ryan. We are so excited to worship with you. Uh, we hope that whether this is your first time or 50th time here, that you feel at home, like you feel like you can be yourself. And uh, we want you to know that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not have it all figured out. because. Um, Gosh, we're just trying to figure out um, who, who Jesus is and why his life changes the way that you and I do ours. And so um, we're excited to worship with you this evening. We're going to start together. This one might be familiar. Why don't you sing it with me? It goes like this. Lord of all, Lord of all the earth, we shall your name, shall your name, filling up the skies with endless praise. Try it again, Lord of all the earth, every voice. Lord of all the earth, we shall your name, shall your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name.
chosen to spend your Sunday night with us, and, and we're expectant that, that God's going to meet you here in a way that's deeply unique and personal just to you. But today we want to remember, um, on Remembrance Day, so many of those who, who fought before us to, for us to have freedom, for us to be able to, to have the reality that we have afforded to us. And so in, in this moment, the veterans, the people who have fought for us, those who, um, gosh, did, did more than we could ever ha have imagined um, for our country's freedom. We, we want to recognize, celebrate, and remember them and their victory. And so we, we're going to take just a minute. I know it gets real loud in here, but for one minute, we're going to go and we're going to bring it right down to nothing. And I want you to just be so, so thankful. So let's, let's honor those folks in this minute together right now.
Lord God, today we, we remember those who, who won 100 years ago this year at the end of World War I found, found part of our freedom. Lord, so thankful for all of the many sacrifices that were given for what we have today. Lord, we remember those folks. And that remembering, Lord, points us to, to another sacrifice, the, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, our, our eternal freedom that we have in you. We pray that we would always be remembered of what you've done through Jesus on the cross, that we'd be forever grateful. Jesus, we love you. We're excited to worship you this evening. We give you all of the honor, all of the praise, and all of the glory. Amen.
Jesus, I pray that you would show us your heart tonight. Help us to catch a glimpse of your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives, in the lives of our friends. We pray, Jesus, that you would help us to be carriers of Jesus. Help us to be carriers of your love, your grace, your mercy. We pray that we would see you working in the lives of our friends, our peer groups, our social circles, that Jesus, you would be built up, you would be honored, you'd be glorified. Those in our lives, those in our circles that are struggling, that feel far from you, that are distant from you, that are filled with doubt, we pray, God, that you would reveal yourself to them and that, Jesus, you would stir that even within us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You can grab a seat, actually, and uh, appreciate you being a part of us. Welcome to the house tonight. I'm so glad that you're with us. My name is Chad. I get to be the lead pastor here, and uh, so glad to be able to share my evening with you and be together tonight. We're going to mix things up a little bit tonight, and uh, normally we have like some great times of worship, and, and then we'll have a message and, and kind of close off the night and do it that way. Tonight we're going to change things up just a little bit. And uh, one of the things I really love is the moments that we're together in worship, in God's presence, and when he's able to just kind of meet with people. And sometimes you can just feel and sense when the Spirit of God is resting on people and drawing people in, and you're you're opening your heart and uh, and responding to Jesus. It's such a great, beautiful thing. And those are some some moments and things that we want to try to lean into a little bit more tonight. It's our desire as a community to continue to grow together and respond to Jesus together and to create space and create some room in our gatherings for us to, uh, to be ministered to by Jesus and, and, and by the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We're starting a new series today for the weeks ahead called Stepping Into. We, we called it Stepping Into dot, dot, dot. And it's kind of like each week there's like a, you know, we're stepping into something as a theme, stepping into courage, stepping into faith, stepping into uh, our purpose stepping into our calling and identity and some of these things, and just, just to, to know and live the life that Jesus has called us to. And this really flows out of uh, the series that we've done over the last couple of weeks or the last month or so on deliberate faith. And we've been doing this series on deliberate faith and, and, and understanding the power of what it means to live with intention and focus on our faith and to see how Jesus, it's like something can be unlocked in the heavenlies when we have focus and intention in spiritual things. And that came out of this, this uh, story where this woman is healed, and Jesus says, because of your deliberate faith, you've been healed, you've been forgiven. And part of the kind of the next step of what we're looking at is this, this idea of stepping into. Stepping into, it's kind of a response of living out our deliberate faith. And one of the things that we're focusing on, we've been focusing on maybe for the past year or so and growing in, is um, this idea of stepping into moments in ministry in the Holy Spirit. What does that look like? What is, it, what, is it, what is it kind of, how is it expressed for us in our community and how do we respond? How do we make room for some of those things? And giving some focus and experiencing that together. There is something really unique and really special about being able to come to a place, be able to be a part of a community that you know the presence of God rests upon. That you can go there and you can experience the love and the presence and the grace of Jesus in your life. And we can do that as a community. That's a tremendous thing. Something that we want to hold on to, we want to protect, and we want to foster, and we want to grow in. And as a lead pastor at, at the house, one of the things that I felt really challenged in and really motivated and, and spurred on in my own spirit is to make sure that we as a community can create opportunity and create space for us to experience the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our gatherings. And you've seen us do that, whether it's an increased focus on people responding, maybe it's a raised hand, maybe it's standing, maybe it's coming forward for prayer at the end of this service, uh, different ways, maybe kind of leading out in prayer and responding and trying to think of different ways to do that and continuing to lean into that. And tonight we want to have an opportunity where during our worship time together, we can just have an extended time of praying with you and of ministry. And this is one way that we can also lean into this and create some space for us to receive ministry from Jesus. And so I want to encourage you and I want to invite you to participate with us as we begin our Stepping Into series to step into more of the presence 
and to create room in your life to step into more of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And you think, well, what does that even mean? What does that look like? I don't know what you're talking about. And I think what it really means is it's to have an openness of your heart to just say, Jesus, are, like, are you real? What have you got for me? Speak to me, minister to me. And it's to kind of put down a little bit of our protectionist and our, or maybe our cynicism and our jadedness and, and, our, and some of those things and to just have an openness of heart. It's really about a posture. It's really about a posture of our heart before Jesus to be open to say, is there something that you have for me? Is there something you can speak into me? Is there something that, Jesus, you can show me, you can, you can do in my life? Is there something I need to do? Sometimes we feel like there's, there's maybe something we need to bring before Jesus. We need to lay it at his feet. We need to uh, invite him to come and show up and to minister to us. And there's a scripture in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. One simple verse I think is just so beautiful. Jesus says this. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. This is perhaps the greatest invitation that you and I will ever receive. This is perhaps the greatest invitation that Jesus extends to us. It's Jesus saying, if you're heavy burdened, if you're heavy laden, if you're carrying the weight of the world upon your shoulders, Jesus invites us. He just says, come to me. Come, come to me. And I will give you rest. Come to me with all the stuff that, that weighs you down. If you're weary, if you're tired, if you're burdened, come to me and I will give you rest. I, I picture that Jesus is giving us rest is like his forgiveness, his love, his grace, his strength, his peace. It's all this good stuff that comes from Jesus, all the good stuff that Jesus represents. It's like you come to him with all the, all the, the stuff that's weighing you down. And there's this beautiful exchange that takes place. And Jesus fills you with all the good things. And what I love about this invitation in Jesus is Jesus doesn't say, get your stuff together first and then come find me. Jesus doesn't say, go and work on this list. Go and and get to this level. He doesn't say, go and pray every day for 30 days for an hour and then come and find me. Jesus just says, if you're weary... Come to me. The love and the heart that comes through in Jesus' invitation is so beautiful, and it's for each one of us, because sometimes we feel like we're not good enough, and we feel like we can't enter in to Jesus. It's like we, we believe in Jesus, but we, we have a relationship or a faith or a belief in Jesus that's kind of arm's length. Like we believe in him, we like to come to church, we have some Christian friends, it's great to sing, and, 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 but we kind of, there's, 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 there's not a closeness there, there's a little bit of a distance, and sometimes there's, a, there's an underlying kind of guilt and restlessness and distance when it comes to our faith in Jesus. And I love that Jesus says, just come to me. And you know, sometimes it feels like there are things that happen in our life, there are things that we're carrying, we wonder how can we get through it? Can we even keep going with all, of, with all the pressures and all the things that are weighing us down? Can we even keep going? Uh, a few years ago, I led a team. Actually, uh, there's about eight of us from the house here. We went into East Africa. Went into Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, and some of these, uh, Burundi's a, one of the poorest nations in the world. And as we were there and traveling through some of the rural areas, there are a number of things throughout that, that, that missions trip that stuck out in my mind and that have stuck with me. But one of them is this image of, of, of people that were in this daily journey, this daily struggle, just even to get water, just to survive. And this image I have that has like been just ingrained upon my heart is as we were driving through this rural area and we're, we're in, our, in our Jeeps, this, this lady, this mom, this young mom who is walking on this dirt road, rocky dirt road, it's this uh, red kind of volcanic soil, and the dust is coming up. She's barefoot, and she's struggling along. She has a, a baby wrapped in a, like a blanket, you know, just kind of all tied up. And is carrying a baby on the front, and a toddler just hanging onto the back. And then she's carrying two big yellow jugs of water on a pole, and she's, she's got them over her shoulder, and, and she's wrapped like a rag 
around the stick to kind of give it some padding. And you can just see it's just pushing in. And she's struggling along this road just to get water, just so she can make it through that day for her and her family. And probably something she had to do every day. And that wasn't just, it wasn't just the struggle of seeing her walk along and, and seeing her try to make it through that. What, what really impacted me is when I went by and, and, I, and I made eye contact with her, it was, it was as if you could just see and you looked into her face. You could see that she was weighed down, she was weary, and she was burdened with much more than just the weight of those water jugs and her kids. It was with everything in life. It was just weighing her down. And I think that sometimes there are things that go on in our lives. There are things that we end up carrying, and it can feel like that. It can feel like we don't know if we can even take another step forward. It's like everything is pressing in. Everything is pressing down. And we feel weary and heavy laden with the weight of the things that we're facing in life. And perhaps you feel that way. Perhaps you feel like you can't keep going. You don't know how you're going to keep going. You don't know how you're going to get through the things that are before you. Maybe there are just too many demands being placed upon you. Maybe you're spread thin. Maybe you feel like you can't carry the things that are being asked of you. We live in a culture and a society that places high demands and high expectations on us. And sometimes those expectations can be crushing. We can feel like, I, I can't meet the demands. I can't meet the expectations that are being placed upon me. And it, and it can just become this growing weight. And it can feel like, like we're being pressed down and crushed under that. Maybe you can't carry the pain and the sorrow of your loss. This morning in one of our services, I had the opportunity to pray with somebody who came to church and, and just two hours before had found out that his dad had passed away. And he just came in and he, just, he, just, he was just carrying the weight and the loss. And he just, I don't know how to go on. I don't know how to figure this out. And we carry that, don't we? We carry burdens. We carry weight. We carry things upon us. And it can weigh us down, and we don't know how to get through. We don't know how to continue on. Maybe you don't know how to face the illness that's before you. Perhaps you can't bear to watch your loved ones make mistakes, and they're bad choices, and it's breaking your heart, and you're seeing how they hurt themselves and they hurt others. Maybe you can't carry the burden of your debt that you found yourself under. Maybe you feel lost right now. Maybe there's a, a burden and a weight that you're just alone, that you feel lonely. And it's like it's always there and you can't escape it. And it's always pressing on you. Maybe you feel lost and you don't know what's going on and you put your hope and your faith into something and you, you started and maybe you're in school and you're taking your school and you don't even know what you're doing or why you're doing it and like you're just... You're just going through it. There are so many things, aren't there, that we can carry, that we process, that, that we are trying to handle, that sometimes nobody else knows, nobody else sees. And I know that over three services, with a couple hundred people in a service, in our, just in our church, maybe 500, 600 people on a Sunday, that there are so many needs. There are so many things that people carry. And if I could just encourage you tonight, it is just to remind you that Jesus invites you to come to him. Jesus says, come to me if you're heavy laden. Come to me if life is pressing down on you. Come to me and I will give you rest. I was reminded this past week of how Jesus so often shows up right in the moments when it feels like we can't go on and we don't know how to go on. During our Wednesday team meetings, we often take time to pray for different needs, different people within our community. And um, you've heard us talk about sending a text bomb before. And this is something that we do as a pastor and ministry leaders. We'll think, you know, who's somebody that we can pray for? Who's somebody we can appreciate? Who's somebody that we can encourage this week? And we'll all take a moment. We'll pull out our phones and we'll all write an encouraging text. And then we'll, we'll pray 
for that person. And we count to three. One, two, three, and we hit send. And the hope is that somewhere within our community, every couple weeks, there's somebody who gets hit with words of encouragement and their phone just kind of blows up. And we hear lots of great comments and feedback. And sometimes we don't hear back from anybody. Lots of times we hear back and say, thank you, appreciate it. Well, this week, we got together and we decided that we should text bomb and pray for someone from our community, a young lady who's been struggling with mental health and anxiety and depression, really just having a hard, hard battle. And so we took some time and we prayed for her. We wrote our messages and we hit one, two, three, send and, and fired it off. Didn't hear anything back. The next day, I get a text from her. It says, thank you for your prayers and for your messages and your words of encouragement. She says, you would never believe the timing. It turns out that she hit rock bottom that Wednesday morning. And she decided she couldn't go on and she OD'd. And she was in the ambulance being rushed to the hospital when the, her phone in her side pocket starts going off. And they say, you better look at that. And in that moment of incredible darkness and discouragement in her life, she gets message after message that says, hey, we're praying for you. We miss you. We love you. You're important. We care. Praying that Jesus will strengthen you. And you know, sometimes it feels, sometimes it feels like Nobody else knows. Nobody else sees. Nobody else understands. But I am reminded again this week that Jesus sees and Jesus knows. He knows what you carry. He knows what you face. He knows the point of pain. He knows the point of struggle in your life. And He invites you to come to Him so he can give you rest. He can give you hope. He can give you strength. He can give you encouragement. He can give you direction. I spoke with a mom earlier this week who had just lost her daughter to a fentanyl overdose. Tremendously tragic story. You need to be careful. It is an evil in our culture. And it is masked. And certainly those who are 30 and under, which would be the majority of our Sunday night community, are being hit and destroyed by this evil in our culture. You need to be wise in your choices and how you live when you're with your friends, when you're in a party atmosphere. I'm not here to lecture you as a dad. I'm just here to say, you've got to be careful. You've got to use some good judgment because it is a tragedy. You don't want to have that conversation. You don't know what it's like to talk to a mom who has just lost her daughter. And as I was talking to her, it's like, what, what do you do? What words do you have? What, what can you say? The despair, the pain, the sorrow, it is so high. And as I was able to spend some time visiting with her and praying with her, she said, you know, as strange as it is, I can feel the presence of Jesus. And somehow in her home this past week as they've been navigating this, it's like the presence and the love and the peace of Jesus has shown up. Regardless of the things and the sense of maybe lostness and hopelessness and the things that at times we can feel, 
would I encourage you that there is no darkness, there is no sin, there is no secret, there is no pain, there is no tragedy, there is no heartache in your life that Jesus cannot show up and wrap his arms of love around and begin to heal and begin to strengthen. But the invitation is for us to come to him. The invitation is for us to come to Jesus so he can give us rest. And perhaps you're here tonight and you carry a burden and the troubles of this world are weighing on you. Maybe you need a miracle that only Jesus can provide. Maybe you need a breakthrough. Maybe you need an answer to prayer. Maybe you just need some guidance and you're just looking to Jesus to help and to show up. The invitation in Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28 is for each one of us tonight to come to him and he promises to give rest to our weary and troubled souls. And so as we spend some time in worship together and we kind of change things around doing a little bit of the talk and stuff up front, but we want to have opportunity. We want to create space and opportunity for you to be built up, to be encouraged, and to be ministered to tonight. Maybe you've never done this before. Maybe this to you, you're like, what are you talking about? What? It's, we're gonna have our our prayer team come to the front and we've adjusted our worship so that it's not too loud and we're just gonna take some time and we're gonna have all of us just spend some time in worship together like we normally would. But we want to have opportunity to pray for you if there's a need, there's a point of need in your life tonight. And you know what? It's important for us to honor that. It's important for us to acknowledge that. It's important for us that you know that our community is a place that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what you're carrying, you can come here on a Sunday night and you can be prayed for, you can be encouraged, you can be built up, and you can meet with Jesus. And that's an important value for us. And we want to take some time and 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 uh, and sow into that and sow into that value. I want to read this one a little verse here in James 5. In James 5, it says this. It says, Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. I love this because it says, Look, are some of you suffering? Are some of you struggling? Are some of you, do you have, are you sick? Do you need prayer? Do you need encouragement? Do you need a miracle? Do you need a breakthrough? Come and we'll pray for you. Let the elders of the church pray for you. And you know what it also says? It says, are you happy? Are you good? Then sing, then worship. We all have a place. And I thought, what a beautiful picture, what a beautiful image it could be if we could just take the next couple of minutes and as a community, we can just be worshiping and praising the Lord together. And those that need some prayer tonight, those that need some encouragement, we would be able to take some time to pray with you. We're a safe community. There's nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be freaked out by. It's simply to just follow the scripture that says, pray. And so I'm gonna get the the prayer team to come. They're gonna be ready to be up front and um, they're going to have badges on. They'll, they'll be kind of just, just up front here. And this is something that maybe we would do at the end of a service. We don't do during the worship, but we're trying to just create an intentional place, an intentional step where we can say, let's be safe, let's be vulnerable, let's be real, let's worship God together, and let's allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. And so I'm going to get you to stand. Would you, would you stand in this, in this moment just like we normally would, nothing out of the ordinary where we're going to take some time, we're going to worship together. But if you need someone to pray with you tonight, would you just come and spend some time seeking the Lord, step out into some faith, step out into some courage, And as the scripture says, come to Jesus so he can give you rest, so he can give you strength and guidance and healing and direction and breakthrough and miracle. And so let's let's worship the Lord together. Jesus, in this moment, we want to just make this a safe place over the next couple minutes. 
Help us as a younger generation to know how to create space and make room in our heart and in our community for you to come and to work and to minister. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we worship tonight, I invite you to come and let someone pray with you. To be your 
sing Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence.
But this know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Cause our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God is higher than any other. Our God is healer, He's awesome in power. Our God, and our God, and our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God is higher than any other. God, you are healer. Awesome and power, our God. Let's sing that again, our God. And our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. God, who is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God. to think about this idea of when fear can get a hold of your heart how it can it can like kind of choke you like it, like fear can get into your life and it can grab on and not let go and I felt like the word for you today is that where there is fear and anxiety and worry and doubt and restlessness in your heart that that fear and that anxiety and those things, that's not from God. And if you feel afraid about something and you're worried about something, that's not from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would cast out fear. And that we would pray that Jesus would show up in your life and he would give you peace and he would give you strength. And so I thought, could we just pray in this moment as we're in this moment of ministry, if you feel like fear there's an area of your life, there's an area of your heart where you know that fear has been grabbing onto. Would you just hold your hand up as a way of just saying, Jesus, I just, I, I give it over to you. Would you take it? I surrender it up. 
Just say, hold your hands up to just say, Jesus, I give you this fear. I give you this worry. I give you this doubt. It's grown in my heart and I don't want it. And as it says in Romans 15 that Jesus, we would put our hope and our trust in you that you would give us confident hope. Not blind, empty hope, but confident hope. Jesus, that you would take out the fear. You would drive out the fear in our life that's gripped our heart. And you would give us strength and peace that only comes from the Holy Spirit. Help us to put our hope and our trust in you. Help us to look to you. Break the holds of the enemy and the discouragement of the enemy in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you for being a part of us tonight. Could you just maybe grab a seat just for a minute? And there may be a few of you still praying and ministering. That's okay. You can, you can do that. Um, just want to kind of wrap up with... Uh, just a few thoughts tonight and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being a community that we can worship together and seek the Lord together and just like bring our stuff before Jesus, the things that we're carrying and to remember that, that he just says, come to me and he will give us rest and our hope is that we would continue to lean into and be a place in a community, a safe place where we can meet with one another, meet with the Holy Spirit. He can, he can minister to people and set people free and, and uh, he can show up in your life. And tonight I wanna just, if, if you blink, you're gonna miss this because it's really, really quick. I just wanna give you uh, just three invitations for us as a community. So this is the very first week that we're doing our Stepping Into series and thinking how can we step into more of the Lord, deeper things in God, step deeper into our purpose, step deeper into moments where we can pray and, and be in God's presence together. And so three really simple invitations. One is to invite you to participate with us in ministry times. This is what we've just done tonight. Times where we're gonna spend time seeking the Lord and praying, making room in our gatherings to just lean in and, and, and uh, lean in with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. To invite you to participate with us in those things. And that really is, you can do that in a couple ways. You can do that by just bringing your heart, sharing your heart, worshiping the Lord, and, and creating a safe place and fostering a place where we can do that. And I think that's just so valuable. It's so great. How, how great would it be if you could say, man, I want to describe my church. Somebody says, what's your church like? And you'd say, well, you know what? It has the worst parking you've ever found. In fact, you probably won't be able to find it. And um, you say, you know, the pastor cries every week. And um, uh, the worship's pretty good. And the coffee's really good. And um, you know what I really love about my church? Is that we can meet with Jesus. And there's opportunity to be in his presence every week. And it's a safe place. It's a safe place to encounter the Holy Spirit. What I'd love is for you to be, able to, to be able to describe your church, be able to say, you know what, no matter what I'm facing, no matter what I'm carrying, no matter what I'm going through, I know that I can go there on a Sunday night. Someone is going to hug me. Someone's going to encourage me. They're going to say, it's great to see you, and they're going to pray for you, and they're going to build you up, and you're going to meet with Jesus, and you're going to be encouraged. That would be amazing. And so we encourage you to participate with us as we continue to try to lean in to more of these things, to take some risks together, and uh, just to create some room and some opportunity uh, for that to happen. Another is to invite you to our prayer ministry night on November 28th. If you've got your phone and you want to write this down, Wednesday, November 28th at 7 p.m. Some of you have never, ever been to a prayer meeting before. I know that. Um, and we're, we're guilt-free and we're pressure-free. We just want to extend the invitation. What we normally do at the house is we have seasonal nights of prayer where we usually focus on praying for the church, vision, direction, for the ministry season ahead. 
We do this three or four times throughout the year, and um, sometimes we have 25 or 50 people come, and we, we pray together for that. What we're going to do for the next one on November 28th, 7 p.m., we're going to have a night of just worship and, and ministry. And so less praying for the church and for vision and all those kind of things, and more just praying praying for one another. This is just one other way, one other area we can say to you that um, encountering the Holy Spirit and making room and being intentional and deliberate for the Holy Spirit to minister and encourage us is important. And so the way we're going to do that night is we're actually going to do like an acoustic worship set. We're going to have the chairs kind of turned into a big circle. And we're just going to take some time. We're going to be praying for one another, laying hands on one another, praying for one another's needs. That's what that night is going to be set apart for. November 28th, 7 p.m., come be a part of it. Participate with it. We would love to see some of you from our Sunday night community participate with us in our, our seasonal nights of prayer. Another is to invite you to become a prayer partner in our church community. As a, as a church, as we've, we've grown and now we're over three services, we realize that uh, we need to do a better job at communication and a better job at trying to figure out how can we care for people and care for, for your needs. And this is something that we've, we're, we're working on. So we've created an email address that we would like for you to, um, to remember and get to know and make use of, and it is connect at thehouseonline.ca. The simple email address, connect at thehouseonline.ca. We invite you and encourage you to make use of this. One way that you can make use of this email is to send us little words of, like the, the, the encouraging words, praise reports, testimonies, things that God does in how he breaks through. Um, sometimes we don't hear about those things. We would like to hear about the ways God is showing up in your life, the ways God's been faithful, the answers to prayer, it is tremendously life-giving and encouraging to others when you can share the breakthroughs and the ways that God shows up, the good, positive things. And so you can just send us a quick little like, two-line, four-line, six-line, one-paragraph email to connect at the house online. Say, tell us a little bit about what God did. And, you know, sometimes we can even say, can we share this? Maybe something we can share in a sermon, we can share with others, we can share with our prayer team, and we can get a sense of the things that God is doing we can get a better pulse and reading on what the Holy Spirit is doing and stirring within our community. If you could do that, if you could share that. Do you know that when God does something and he does something in your life, there is great power and significance in sharing that with other people because there are other people who are feeling the same thing, wrestling with the same thing, hoping for the same thing. And it's tremendously life-giving to hear that Jesus is alive and present and working miraculously in someone else's life. And there's a breakthrough. And so would you share those things, even tonight? Maybe God met with you tonight. Maybe this past week you've had a victory. Maybe it's something recent. Make use, connect at thehouseonline.ca, share those praise reports. Another is to share prayer needs. Connect at thehouseonline.ca. Sometimes we're the last to hear about the prayer needs and the struggles and the points of care in your life. And you know, sometimes we've heard through the, through the grapevine that, that somebody is is um, disappointed that we didn't do more, that we didn't care, we didn't call, we didn't, and, and we didn't know. Oh, that's tremendously discouraging as, as a pastor to hear somebody's disappointed in you that you didn't care for them and you didn't actually know that there was a need. This is one area where I invite you, it's okay to tell us something about somebody else, okay? We know gossip's not good, we're not asking you to gossip, but maybe there's somebody in your life say, you know what? This person is a part of our community. They're going through a hard time. Let us know. Please, if you're going in for surgery, if you're sick, if you need a breakthrough, if you're struggling, if you've got something going on in your life that you need prayer covering for, please let us know. Connect at thehouseonline.ca. We as the team, as pastors, we can read those things. We can make sure people are cared for. We can pray for those things. It helps us know what's going on and, and what's happening within our community. And um, we can't care. We can't help. We can't encourage you if we don't know. So please let us know. Another thing is we invite you to become a prayer partner with us. And um, one of the things that we know we need to do better at is to make sure that within our community there are people who are uh, called and gifted, maybe as intercessors, as prayer people, and we're leveraging that gift. We're making use of that gift and that call in your life 
to be praying for the needs in our church and in our community. Some of you have that. I know some of you have that. Some of you have a gift of compassion. You're motivated. You're filled with empathy and care and concern for others. You're motivated for God to, to show up and to, and to be present in people's lives. Some of you have that gift. You're intercessors. You carry that burden. We want to know who you are. We want to leverage your gift for our community. And so um, there are times where if we have we have uh, requests come in at connectonthehouseonline.ca and different needs in our community. We need to have a group of people, a list of people, we can send those needs out to and say, here are some needs in our church. Please be praying for these needs. Some churches call those prayer chains and prayer lists and things like that. We're just saying, if you could be a prayer partner with us, if you pray in that way, we'd love to have you a part of that. Um, sometimes there are needs that come up Maybe just as the pastors, we're going through a hard time, we're being discouraged, uh, we're facing some spiritual warfare, we're on the front line, sometimes it's really hard. And it would be great to have a group of people in our community to know that we say, hey, can you be praying for us this week? These are some of the things we've been facing, we need some covering. And so looking for a team of people that can do that. You can actually be a part of that tonight, you can do that right now, it's really, really easy. Um, you can do it in, in two ways. If you want to be a prayer partner, you can do it on your, on your phone right now. Uh, you can send an email to connect at thehouseonline.ca and just put sign up in the header or say, hey, I want to be a prayer partner in the, little, in, the, in the text portion, something like that, and send it to us. We'll get that email. We'll add your email. We're not going to inundate you with emails. This is not going to be spam central. This is, we're looking for people in our community that can pray for our community, pray for the needs in our church. We want to be intentional. We want to be deliberate. We want to lean into the Holy Spirit. We want, to see the, that we want to see Jesus free to move in our community. You need the presence of Jesus in your lives. Your friends need the presence of Jesus. This is what we're about as a church community. And so if you can pray and be a part of that, send that email, sign up at connectatthehouseonline.ca. Another thing you can do is you can text us. You can text the word Partner to 289-778-0200. 289-778-0200. Text the word partner. And you'll get a you'll get a text prompt back. You can enter in your email address. Really easy, really simple. And um, it's just a way that you can sign up. We need prayer covering. In our church community, we need prayer covering. We invite you to participate with us in that. That's a way that you can join in. That's a way you can be a part of our community and strategically help us. And so we invite you to share testimonies and, and, and praise reports and positive things and to share points of need, share things in your life and in your heart when you need prayer covering yourself because sometimes we just don't know. And um, that's all we got for tonight. So appreciate you being a part of us. Why don't you stand and I'm just going to pray for, for us as a community. And uh, Ryan and the team are going to send us off in, uh, with a song together. And um, I just want to pray over you tonight. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll dismiss in just a moment. Thank you for being a part of us tonight and for sharing your evening with us. Thank you for allowing us to be a community that we can create some space for the Holy Spirit to work and minister. That is so important. And so let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you. For this community, I thank you for the way that you show up week after week, your faithfulness. And there are so many points of need. There are so many, uh, so many of us that carry heavy burdens and there's difficult situations. But Jesus, we pray that you would show up. We pray that you would be present in our lives. And I pray, Lord, for this community that on Sunday night, this would be a safe place. This would be a place people know they can come and meet with Jesus and that Jesus is going to be present and Jesus is going to be honored and he's going to be made a priority. Lord, that you would stir that up within us. Help us as a community to protect that and foster that, to know that when we get here at six o'clock on a Sunday night, we're going to meet with you and our friends are going to meet with you and there's room for you to encourage us and fill us. And so, Jesus, we look to you for all things in your name. Amen. Ryan and the team are going to give us a good send-off, and, uh, and then we'll close. Thank you for being a part of us.
Thank you for being a part of us tonight and uh, sharing your evening with us. Um, we have the offering if you want to give tonight on your way out. It's underneath the Scrabble board. There's a donation station there, and it's self-directed with your debit or credit card. However, I want to say thank you so much for your faithfulness and supporting us in the ministry here. And um, we're going to do a baptism service at the end of November. We had a whole bunch of people sign up in uh, early October. We were announcing this. And uh, we have these really cool, amazing automatic iPad forms. You go and fill it, and, and it, it, it didn't go anywhere. It, we had a glitch, and they, they just went up into space somewhere. And we lost those, those names, and so we apologize. If you signed up last week, you're good. We have you. If you signed up before that, in earlier October, there's a chance that we don't have your name. And we would love to be able to meet with you. Maybe you have some questions about baptism. We'll talk to you about what days we're doing that, what it looks like, how to prepare, what it means. 
and uh, just help you through that. But we need you to sign up. If you have come through, maybe God's been stirring in your life and your heart and uh, you've been growing and coming to faith in him and understanding and you want to take those steps for baptism, please just stop by the info booth and, and use the iPad there and we'll make sure that we get that and, uh, and follow up with you and include you on that. And uh, we're so grateful and blessed that you're a part of our community. Make us who we are. Thank you for being here this week. And uh, Student Lounge, all this week, on Monday, Tuesday, uh, there's Alpha on Wednesday night and lots of good things happening this week. And uh, make sure you're, you're plugging into those things. And if we don't see you before next Sunday, we'll see you next Sunday night again. Thank you for being here and sharing your night with us. And uh, if you want someone to pray with you, I think the rest of the ministry team, they'll be hanging around a little bit more. They'll do that. But officially, we're dismissed. Coffee shop's open. Band's going to hang out with us for a little bit. And uh, you guys, can you do like, like a, no, nothing? You got nothing? You got nothing? Ryan's like, no, I got nothing. We, uh, we overextended. We made them make up songs as they were playing for our ministry time. And so anyways, be blessed, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday night.